So let's talk about taxes and how to uh, save on taxes, not avoid taxes, but how to rightfully save on taxes uh, per just some, let's call it a, a loophole or a fact out there that a lot of people don't necessarily realize. Now, I posted a video earlier about how I sold uh, or I'm selling the uh, 16 Porsche GT3 RS. Um, and how I had purchased that for around, you know, let's call it 156,000, and I'll be selling it for, let's call it about 200,000, making about 45 or so, 40,000 after some fees um, on that particular car. And uh, as, as a just great other video, if you wanna know how that, how that works, check it out. Um, but basically, uh, you can drive a lot of uh, uh, supercars for free if you purchase, any, uh, purchase them correctly. So headed to uh, Nashville, Tennessee right now to a place called uh, Velocity Motor Cars. Really, really, really great place. Uh, Brian up there is always taking care of me. Um, he's the one that's actually selling the Porsche GT3 RS and they had a new Ferrari uh, 16 488 Spider that came in. And so I am on my way up there to look at it. Now, keeping all emotionals out of a purchase like this, um, I'm going up there basically to check out this car to see if it is something that I want to get into. I can tell you without even looking at the car, it has pretty much all the things that I don't want. It doesn't have any of the things that I do want. Uh, for me personally, if I was emotionally buying a car, uh, doesn't have the bucket seats, doesn't have a lift, doesn't have uh, the hi-fi system in it. Um, I don't necessarily love the color. Doesn't have, does have good carbon fiber in it. Uh, doesn't have a lift. Basically all the things that I would want in a car um, this thing does not have. However, it is at a good price, um, and uh, I feel like I can work on a deal that makes this very attractive. Remember that I'm purchasing, or when you purchase things and you purchase things with purpose, oftentimes you can settle and say, well, it's exactly what I'm looking for, but it is still gonna be a Ferrari 488 Spider. So even though it doesn't have a couple of those things, my main concern are, is it at a good price right now? In comparison, to the miles I'll put on it and the status of the vehicle when I want to sell it, let's say two years from now. And if I sell it two years from now, does it have options and things that other people might find attractive, like some basic line options? Is it a good looking car that other people might be attracted to? And for what I would sell it for, can I actually make some money on it or at least drive it for free or use a very little? One of the ways uh, this works, and the reason why I would purchase or potentially let's call it a car swap from Velocity versus going to another dealership, after all, there is a beautiful, exactly what I'm looking for, uh, Ferrari uh, 488 uh, GTB um, in uh, the Atlanta area, which is right next door to where I am, and in Denver, Colorado. Two beautiful, beautiful assessments, lower mileage, all the features exactly what I want. Um, however, they're a little bit more expensive because of some of those features, and they have the one, one main thing, and that would be a big, big tax bill. What happens, a lot of people don't realize this, but when you take a car in, um, and you trade it in, you get the value of that car uh, towards the purchase of your other car and you only have to pay taxes on the difference. So, for example, if if they sell the Porsche GT3 RS at this dealership for 200,000, I take that 200,000 and if I apply it to the new Ferrari, which is gonna be in the 250 range, that's a $50,000 increase in pricing. I only pay taxes on the 50,000. If I was to sell the car for, let's say 200,000, took the cash in hand, um, so got the cash of the check from uh, Velocity Motor Cars, and then I went to Ferrari, say of Atlanta, and picked up the one that has all the options, that's really great, exactly what I'm looking for, I'm gonna be paying basically 7% on uh, the full 250,000. Now, what that means is I'm paying about 7% at 200,000 extra dollars, which is $14,000. That is a big, big difference. That 14,000 is a, probably about the difference in depreciation um, that I would see on the car if I sold it here a year later, two years later. So, to recap, I could, option one, go in, uh, sell the car, get my 200,000, take that 200,000, go down to the dealership, buy exactly what I'm looking for, with all the options in it, great car, great feeling about it, get in the Ferrari of my dreams or whatever, exactly the one I'm looking for, right color, right spec, all those kind of things, but pay $14,000 more because I'm at the pay of the taxes. 
or I could go in and get a car that is still a really great car, not maybe not exactly the color that I would pick, maybe not exactly the seats that I would pick, but a great, great spec, um, and I can get into that vehicle, save $14,000, which lowers my cost of ownership by $14,000, which means when I go to sell it, I'm not gonna lose that $14,000. So just a little bit of tidbit, um, it is kind of interesting, a lot of people don't think about it, but it is a very, very critical matter in this idea of buying a supercar and then selling it years later with basically not losing any money. Again, I did it with a Ferrari California, bought it for, I don't know, 108,000, sold it for like the 120s. I took that 120, I went then and got the Porsche GT3 RS for like 156, paid a little bit of difference there. The Porsche GT3 S went up to now 200s. I'm now selling that and I'm gonna take that 50,000 uh, plus maybe, maybe a little bit and I'm gonna go buy the Ferrari 488 basically increasing it using the car's value increase um, as actually a bigger down payment and sort of moving up as uh, the, the values of the cars move up.